Hi yogis, look at this beautiful sky above me. Hope you're ready for our energizing vinyasa flow. Let's get started. We'll begin in a gentle seated meditation to start our beautiful morning together. Find your seat, tall spine, heart forward, shoulders rolled back. Hands in between your lap or on your legs. Maybe taking a little mudra if you wish. Closing the eyes and starting to go inwards, focusing on your breath. Focusing on your body and the space around you. The earth below you, the sky above you. Find it's always a good way to start a meditation just by focusing outwards into your senses. It's a little easier than going inward so quickly. And then when you feel ready, just focusing on your breath. Knowing that your brain, your breath is your anchor. It's always there to guide you through your meditation. When you feel your mind wandering. deeply through the nose. If you have any sinus problems in the morning, it's okay to breathe gently through the mouth too, but as much as possible, it's better to breathe through your nose. In India, they say eating through the mouth and breathing through the nose. And they say this because your nose has a beautiful filtration system, filtering the bacteria from the outside before it gets processed in your lungs. It also warms the breath, so we're able to really take in those nutrients like we need to rather than when it's from the mouth and it comes without filtration and pretty cold to the lungs. Also, because breathing through the mouth doesn't have that filtration system, it brings a lot of toxins and bacteria into our body, in turn creating infections, lots of acidity in the body when you breathe through the mouth. So if you, have, if you know yourself to have any throat soreness in the morning or kind of an itchy throat, maybe it means you're breathing through the mouth while you sleep. Just look into that, be more aware of where you're breathing from. More deep breaths here in our meditation. Deep yogic breaths, feeling the whole movement of the breath from the top of your head to your pelvic floor. go into more of a active breath but with gentle arm movement. So what we're going to be doing is inhaling as we lift the arms up and then exhaling as we lower them down. Feel free to do whatever feels comfortable for you with the hands. I like to let my palms guide the movement. So they're always switching direction when they're going up and down but if something else feels good to you that's okay as well. Notice how it's so connected, it feels so right to rise when you're inhaling and to lower down to the earth as you exhale. This is a beautiful way to 
start feeling that connectedness between your movement and your breath. This is a big part of the vinyasa practice as you flow through your movements as well as the sun salutations. Every different pose has a different breath, every movement you make. And it's like that for a reason, because of this beautiful connectedness that you feel when you inhale and everything rises, your chest expands. And when you exhale, and everything contracts back to center and feels nice and heavy and grounded. Let's do a couple more of these. Also warming up the shoulders after our slumber. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, let's side bend to the right. Feel free to do this as deeply as you want, making sure that your hips stay grounded so that you maintain that lower half of the side bend in the hips and lower belly region. Use your breath, every inhale finding length, every exhale lowering down into your side bend, if that feels right. If it feels really tight in the morning, it's okay to stay a bit higher and just breathe through that. And if you feel your breath opening your body, then move with it. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, other side. Deep yogic breaths whenever we hold a pose. Using that breath as a tool, just like we said, finding more length and going a little bit deeper into the posture. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, let's come to a gentle twist, turning towards the right. Right hand comes behind your back, maybe on the ground, or interlacing towards your inner left thigh. Left hand comes to your knee. You can do this as deeply as you wish. Just make sure that even if you're not twisting so deeply right now, that you're still finding length in your spine, that you're still rolling the shoulders back and reaching the heart forward. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, other side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, let's lower our hands onto our shoulders and go for some elbow rolls. Feel the whole movement of that shoulder joint within your fingertips. The shoulder joint is a very fragile one because it's pretty open. There's no ball and socket like the hip. It's not being protected. It's just connected by muscles. So we really want to strengthen and warm up these areas. Prevent any further tension or injury. And change direction. Also, when we sleep, I feel like I always tend to wake up with shoulders that need to be stretched. After not moving for however many hours you sleep, it builds up that fascia and that connective tissue and feels really tight in the morning. So I always like to start with shoulder stretches in my day and open up these regions. Inhale, the hands come all the way up towards the sky. And let's go for some fist pumps, really energizing, just squeezing the fists and opening. Energizing our arms, lots of circulation and blood flow, already heating up from this movement. Make sure you're closing the fist completely and opening the fingers as much as you can. Keep going. Keep going, a little bit longer. 
Feel the forearm burn. A little bit more. And then slowly lower down the hands. And let's come to a seat on our toes for a gentle toe stretch. Feel free to start at first on your hands just to get into the stretch in the sole of your feet. Or if you already feel ready, starting to walk the hands to your body and getting a little bit more weight into the stretch. Hands can be on your thighs or heart center. Just take a couple deep breaths here. Let's bring the back of our palm to our hip crease. Really press against it, widening the back of your, the top of your upper back feel almost like it's rounding forward like in a cat cow and then you'll bring your chin to your chest and just slowly rock the head side to side giving a gentle neck stretch as well one more breath Find a child's pose, just lean forward, hands come. Again, a gentle stretch in the shoulders, but also in the joints of our legs, releasing any tension from the back. And take a couple deep breaths here, knowing that you can always take a child's pose whenever you need inside of practice. Let's take one more deep breath. And then slowly coming up onto our hands, tucking our toes and finding a downward facing dog. Adding any movement that feels good to you to warm up the body. Maybe walking out the legs, maybe shaking out the hips, maybe leaning the weight forward and back. We'll go into that movement a little bit more deeply in a second. But just for the first part of your down dog, doing whatever feels good to you just to warm up the body. Finding your static downward facing dog, let's take a couple deep breaths here. If you're familiar with the Udhyana Bandha, you can practice a gentle Udhyana Bandha right now in the belly region, which is basically just on the exhale, letting the belly kind of rise into the ribcage, very gently. Great practice to do in the morning on an empty stomach, really stimulating the digestive system, massaging the abdominal organs. go into our movement that I spoke about before. I'm going to try to find this kind of rolling movement. You're going to come up onto your tippy toes. I'll break it down piece by piece and then you'll be on your own for the body rolls. So first you come up onto your tippy toes and you lean forward as if you were going into a plank. Drop the knees before you hit the ground, right before the ground, and then move your weight back to your heels and lift the hips up to find downward facing dog again. So it's gonna look like this in fast motion. Heels, plank, knees, heels, hips, just like that. Rolling the body out. If it feels good, you can even go a little bit more deeply, really thinking like cat-cow. So in your plank, you're really pushing against the ground, finding that cat pose. And then as your knees come down, you're finding the cat, the cow pose, and then heels and hips down dog. 
just play around with it. It's okay if it's not exactly like mine. It's okay if you add a little bit of your own movement, just flowing around, moving the circulation before we go into our sun salutations and blow work. Deep breaths, feeling how energized your body gets just from this gentle, rounding movement. We'll do a couple more. Last one. And then let's walk the feet towards our hands. Finding a forward fold. Let the weight sink forward. Relaxing the neck. One more breath here in your forward fold. Feel free to dangle if you wish. And then let's slowly round up to standing. Close the eyes. Feel the circulation flowing from your head to your feet. Notice if you feel stable in your stance. And if you don't, what can you do to make that feel more stable? Maybe grounding a little bit more into your toes, into your feet, into your heels, into the ball of your foot. Maybe bending the knees a little bit slightly so that you can really activate the muscles in your legs when you're standing and not just finding a locked joint. Maybe it's tilting the tailbone slightly and activating in the core very gently, in turn helping you feel more stable as well. Maybe it's rolling the shoulders back, radiating the heart forward, feeling that beautiful posture. Make sure the head is above the shoulders and not leaning too far forward so there's no strain on the neck. Immediately, you should feel really stable like a mountain within your mountain pose stance. Let's close the legs and prepare for our sun salutations. We'll do five rounds. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. Moving a bit more gently in our first round. Inhale, halfway lift, either hands on the ground or hands on the legs. Grounding onto the floor, hold the breath as you move back to your plank, taking two steps. Let's drop the knees for our first chaturanga. Exhale, leaning forward, elbows close to the body. Inhale, up dog, legs off the ground, heart radiating forward. Exhale, down dog. Take one deep breath here. Look forward. Again, taking two steps in our first round just to move slowly. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rising up towards the sky, hands to the ceiling. Exhale, hands to heart center. Samastiti he rests. Beautiful. Round two. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga, walk, step, or hop. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. One deep breath. Look forward, walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Round three. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. One deep breath. 
Looking forward, walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Round four. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. One deep breath. Look forward, walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last Sunday. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let's take three deep breaths here. Keep moving weight back to your heels, finding length in your spine. One more breath. And then we'll look forward, walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. Let's go into sun B with some fun variations. First round, we'll do regular and then we'll add some fun stuff. Inhale, straight into chair pose. First round, moving slowly, just learning about the postures. Sit back into your chair. Make sure the hips are going back and the knees aren't going forward. Lengthen the spine. Hands stay by your ears. You could feel free to look forward in your chair or to look between your hands. Exhale, forward fold. We're warm now, so every pose, try to feel a little bit more deeply. So when you're forward fold, try to move the weight a little bit more to your toes, feeling the hips more over your heels. Fold a little bit more deeply with your body towards your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, creating more heart opening, more shoulders rolled back. Exhale, chaturanga. Feel free to take any variation anytime we do this. If you want to put knees down, legs up, if you want to go all the way to the ground or right before. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Yes. Inhale, the right leg comes up towards the sky. One legged dog. And then exhale, bring it all the way through your hands to ground before we lift up into warrior one. Really important in our first round, we'll cover the alignment, dropping the back heel, turning the left toes out. Make sure that your right knee is above your right ankle in line with your toes already here. A lot of the time I see people just going forward and then when they come up, they kind of lose their balance. So really feel the earth beneath your feet. And when you're ready, make sure when you lift, the legs do not move. It's all upper body. Inhale up. Yes. Inhale, reach a little bit higher. Exhale, chaturanga with one leg or two. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Going on to the left side. Inhale, the left leg all the way. One legged dog. Exhale, ground. Bring the foot in between your hands. Ground in the back heel. Make sure your legs are super aligned already here. Your hips as well, turning forward. And when you're ready and grounded into your toes, inhale, reaching up towards the sky. Take a moment to really cover your alignment. Are your hips forward? A little bit of a tuck in the tailbone. Activate in the core. Knee above the ankle. Reaching up towards the sky, active body. Again, you can stay looking forward, just like in chair or in between your hands. One more breath. 
Inhale, reach a little bit higher. Exhale, chaturanga with one leg or two. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take one deep breath here. Look in between your hands. Walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, chair pose. Hips come back. Exhale, hands to heart center and stand. Tadasana. All right. Let's keep going. Inhale, chair, picking up the pace. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right leg up towards the sky. Inhale. Exhale, bring that leg all the way through your hands. Ground in the back heel. Inhale to warrior one. Exhale to warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, try to round the one leg or two. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Other side. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, bring it all the way through your hands. Ground in the feet before you breathe. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two, turning towards the right, looking beyond your middle finger and left hand. Inhale, reverse that warrior, bringing your right hand to your back leg, reaching up towards the sky. Exhale, rounding back down, chaturanga, one leg or two. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take three deep breaths. Feel free to take this in a child's pose as well. Keep grounding through the heels. One more breath. Look forward. Walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center. Yes. Last round. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, the right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, grounding in between your hands, dropping the heel to the ground. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse that warrior. Exhale, let's bring our weight all the way forward into our right hand and lift our left leg, but we're not gonna stay here in half moon. We're gonna grab the foot and find sugar cane. If this is not a part of your practice or too difficult, you don't have to. You can stay in a half moon variation and just kind of bend the hand and the leg towards each other. Okay, just try. That's a whole part of the yoga, have fun. Yoga is a playground, it's not homework. <laughs> Take one more breath here in sugar cane. And then slowly drop the left foot back to the ground. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, let's bring our chest back to our thigh and find humble warrior. Three deep breaths here. If you want to go deeper, you can bring the chest beyond your right leg, but you don't have to. You can kind of rest the side chest on your right thigh. This is a nice thigh burner in the morning. One more breath. Inhale, round the hands up to warrior one. And then we're leaning forward to find warrior three. If you don't have enough space, like I don't, 
Then move the weight back. Again, do the breath so that you're moving with your breath. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, lean forward into your right foot and lift the back leg to find warrior three. You can do this with hands reaching forward, hands reaching back, or hands from heart center. Whatever you choose, make sure that your hips are closed, that you drop that left hip so the hips stay aligned, feel that thigh burn, feel that glute burn, active top leg, strong straight back, one more breath, and then drop the hands to the ground, chaturanga, one leg or two, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog, let's take one deep breath between each side, Inhale the left leg towards the sky. Exhale, bring it all the way through your hands. Ground in that back heel. If you know you'll already need space, so already bring it back here. That's okay too. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, bringing that left hand to the ground in front of you. Lifting in that right foot, maybe grabbing the foot to find sugar cane. It's okay if not as well, if you just try, or taking a half moon, that's also fine. One more deep breath. And then bring that right heel back to the ground. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, chest to thigh. Humble warrior, letting the hands come overhead, interlaced fingers, chest against your thigh. If you want to go deeper, you're bringing the chest beyond your left thigh. Whatever you choose is beautiful. One more deep breath here. Swing the hands forward, inhale straight into warrior one. Leaning the weight into that left leg. Finding warrior three. Hands come forward. And then if it feels better to you, maybe swinging the hands back, maybe if you don't have enough space, or hands to heart center. Whatever you choose in the hands, square the hips, drop that right hip, activating in the glutes and the thigh, active top leg, open heart, shoulders back. One more breath. And then drop the hands to the ground. Take a chaturanga with one leg or two. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Woo! Let's drop the knees and take a child's pose for a moment. Sitting on the heels. Deep breath. Notice your heartbeat. Notice the heat you've created within your body from a couple of rounds of postures, of movement, of breath. The body becomes alive and vibrant. One more deep breath here. And then slowly coming back onto your hands. Tucking the toes, coming back to downward facing dog. Exhale, deeply sink into the heels. Look forward, walk, step, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Your hamstrings should feel nice and open now. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, come to standing, hands to heart center. Let's open the legs. Take an open Tadasana for a moment just to release that hot energy. Take three deep breaths here. <sighs> Inhale, 
Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, let's drop the hands to the ground to find forward fold. Take a dangle here for a moment, rocking side to side. Beautiful work. Just like we did in our salutation right now, we went into that sugar cane pose. Let's find it here from a more stable movement rather than when we're flowing. So we're going to lean the weight into our right foot and our right hand, and then lift the left leg. If you want, you can just stay here and keep bending the leg towards your head. Keep lifting the leg as well. You can just practice here in this kind of standing splits variation with the bent leg. If you feel nice and steady, maybe lifting that left hand, trying to grab the foot. Make sure you're grabbing the foot from the inside as well. If you're feeling up to the challenge, bend in that standing leg slightly to really fire up those muscles. Look forward and start to lift up to find dancer pose. Keep kicking into that hand. One more breath. You got this. Try it out. Even if you fall, even if you lose your balance, have fun with it. One more breath. And then release the leg, hands to heart center. Inhale, knee to chest. Exhale, ground. Beautiful work. Shake it out. Before we go to the other side. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, forward fold. Then taking a little dangle, moving side to side. Now when you feel ready, moving the weight into that left foot, lifting into the right foot. Take a moment to feel balanced here with your foot on the ground, with your hands on the ground. Just working on that leg flexibility and bending it towards the body and lifting up high. If you feel ready, lift the right hand towards the right foot, finding that sugar cane pose. Feel free to stay here and work on the sugar cane. Or if you feel okay, start looking forward, bend in the standing leg to activate those muscles and lift up to find dancer. Once you lift up, kick up into that back hand to find that length and that height within your dancer. One more breath. And then hands come to heart center. Inhale, knee to chest. Exhale, lower the foot down. Beautiful work. Keep the legs nice and wide. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And let's sit in a yogi squat. Feeling super grounded after all that lifting movement. Use the contra between your knees and your elbows to lift up into your heart. Bring your thumbs to your heart center in this mudra. Find length in your spine. Let's take three deep breaths here. Ground into the outer rim of your feet so you're not collapsing into the ankles. If your heels aren't on the ground, that's okay too. One more breath. Inhale, let's reach the arms up and take a pistol finger grip to find even more length here within our yogi squat. Three more breaths. And then lower the finger down in front of you, keeping that pistol finger grip, shooting and walking the finger a little bit more and more forward. Going into those inner hips, the inner groin region. You can feel free to open the fingers as well and walk them forward. Whatever feels good to you. Feel this nice stretch in the upper back. One more breath. And then slowly come to a seat. Woo! Bringing the 
feet together, preparing for Baddha Konasana. I'll turn towards you. Find length in your spine, feet together. Inhale, bring the hands all the way up. Exhale, let's first bring our hands behind our back to find this nice heart opening, hip opening posture. Keep reaching the heart forward and rolling the shoulders back. You can let the head drop as well, or if it's too much on your neck, then keep it neutral. Whatever feels good. Couple more deep breaths. Keep reaching the heart forward. Keep reaching the shoulders back. Feeling nice and warm on this beautiful morning. One more breath. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. Moving slowly, really being aware of every movement that you make and how it makes your body feel. Every breath you take, let your body sink a little bit more deeply towards the ground. Just let gravity do its work. You don't have to work really forcefully here. Just with your breath, coming back to the, what we talked about in the beginning, every inhale, you feel your body kind of lift and become light, finding more length in your spine, more heart opening. And then every exhale, your body grounds and becomes heavier. It goes a little bit more deeply into the posture. Notice how this will kind of happen on its own, especially in a pose with gravity like forward folds. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll come up onto our hands and swing our left leg back straight into a pigeon pose. Adjust as needed. If it's too deep for you, you can place a block or a big pillow under your right hip. If you're okay, the hips are on the ground, or not okay, if you're very flexible, <laughs> you're all okay. <laughs> if you want to go deeper, you bring the foot forward to find this more angle seven position. If you want to go less deep, you bring the foot closer to your hip thigh, your hip joint. Take a look back at your back leg, making sure that it's straight and that you're on the top of the foot and on the knee and that the leg isn't turning outwards. And then let's come to the top of our fingertips and for a second find an active pigeon, which is what this means is instead of sinking, you're squeezing the thighs together and the hips are lifted. Yes, taking an active pigeon, active muscles, hands up towards the sky, three deep breaths here. I like to do some pistol fingers to really activate in that lift. Two more breaths, keep squeezing the thighs together as if they were scissoring back to center. One more breath. And then exhale, ground and roll forward to a resting pigeon. Keep rolling the weight to that left leg so that your hips become aligned and that they're not rolling outwards. Breathing deeply through the nose. Notice the differences within your mind and within your body with every breath you take. Notice if your breath is different every time, every round. Notice if you can relax a little bit more and surrender a little bit more to the posture on every exhale you take.
Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly come up onto your hands. Let's go for some quad work. Just gonna inhale and bring the leg towards you, the left leg, and then exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Do this very gently. Make sure you're not slapping the ground with your foot. Couple more. Last one and stay up. From here, you're gonna ground into the right hand. You can bring it kind of by your right knee or on the outside, whatever helps you feel balanced. And then reach that left hand to the left foot, just like we did in Sugar Cane and Dancer. You can stay here, or you can start to bring the foot a little bit more closely to you. Maybe bringing the foot into your inner elbow region. Preparing for Mermaid Pigeon. If you're with me, you can stay here, or you can connect palms overhead. Finding a beautiful mermaid pigeon, if this is too much, you can stay holding the foot. You can even stay with our just quadricep stretch with the hands on the ground. Whatever variation you choose, take a couple deep breaths. Remember to be playful and try things. See how they feel. One more breath. And then slowly release the leg. And swing it back forward. Finding that Baddha Konasana angle. One more time. Notice any differences in your legs. Maybe the color of your feet. After we had a lot of pressure in closing that right hip, the right foot should little, look a little bit more blue. And the left foot should look a little bit more regular. <laughs> because it was open. So notice these little things that happen in your body when you flow. And then when you're ready, changing sides. Bringing that right foot back. Left foot to the hip for less intensity or more forward for more intensity. Trying to really stabilize the hip before we find that active pigeon using a prop if you need to. Make sure your back leg is nice and straight. And then we'll lift up into the hips. Activate those muscles in the thighs and the glutes. Inhale, reach the hands up. Take any hand variation you want. Maybe pistol fingers, maybe just reaching up towards the heavens. Three deep breaths, active pigeon. Press into your legs off the ground, keep lifting. One more breath. And then slowly lower down with the hips, finding a resting pigeon. Keep moving the weight towards that right leg. Make sure your hips are nice and aligned. Deep breath. Again, being aware of your breath and any sensations that arise within your pose, physically, mentally, or emotionally. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. breath and 
then slowly awakening from your sleeping pigeon and coming back up onto your hands. We'll go into our quad work. Inhale, the right leg towards the body. Exhale, lower down slowly with control. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Beautiful pigeon work. Keep going. Feel that active thigh. Maybe it feels like it's shaking a little bit or vibrating a little bit. That's what we want when we're building muscles. Let's do one more. And then inhale, lift. Exhale, ground in the left hand. And reach back for the right foot with the right hand. Feel free to stay here, stay all the way forward with the active leg. Just keep this leg in whatever variation you take, keeping that right leg lifted. If you're grabbing the right foot, maybe move the weight a little bit more back and bring the foot into your inner elbow. You can stay here, or if you're going for the full mermaid pigeon vision, hands come overhead, connecting the palms together. And open the heart through your arms. Getting a little back angle now. Again, taking any variation you want that I mentioned. And three deep breaths within that pose. One more breath. And then slowly release the leg back down to the ground. Let's swing the right leg back to the front. And then come up onto our backs. Woo! Legs are hips distance. Ground in the feet, we're preparing for low bridge. Hands come by the hips. Really important that your legs are active here. Okay, we've been doing a lot of leg activation, so we're going to do that to the end. <laughs> Grounding in the feet, hands by the hips, whenever you're ready, starting to lift. And you should notice that when you're pressing into the feet, it's much easier to lift the hips. Whether if you're just relaxing the legs and you're lifting the hips, it takes a lot more effort. You should notice these little differences within your poses. Hands are by the hips. If you want to go more deeply, you're interlacing fingers underneath the body, rolling the shoulders underneath, and lifting the hips a little bit higher. Make sure your legs stay parallel, that the knees don't open and the feet don't open. They stay nice and hips distance. Grounding into the feet. Keep lifting the heart up towards the sky, connecting chin to chest. Take a couple deep breaths here. In this gentle inversion. And if this is too deep, you can always do a half low bridge, keeping the hands on the floor and lowering the hips halfway. That's fine too. Just staying a little bit with this diagonal body or slanted body so we're getting more circulation to the brain and to the heart. One more breath. And then slowly lower down to the ground. Let's go for one more round. Up to you if you want to do another low bridge. Or if you want to go into a full wheel. The hands will come by the ears. If you're with me in full wheel. If you want to do another low bridge, that's fine too. Again, pressing into the feet. Always pressing into the feet. And then slowly lifting up. Whatever variation you took, low bridge or wheel, make sure the knees are hips distance, the feet are parallel, grounding into the fingertips, opening the heart, couple more deep breaths. And then slowly lower down. 
Bring the knees to chest. And let's let them fall to the right for a gentle recline twist, looking towards the left. One more deep breath. Then slide your knees over to the left side, looking towards the right. One more breath. Bringing the leg back to center, giving yourself a nice juicy hug for wind release pose. Everything hugging inwards. And then releasing completely for Shavasana. Feel free to take any variation you want. If you feel any strain in the lower back, you can keep the feet bent, let a feet mat distance, and then drop the knees inward to create lots of space in the lower back. Instantly, this should feel more comfortable if you have any tension in the lower back. And if you're okay, legs are on the ground. You can also place a pillow under your knees for any tension in the lower back. Hands are on the belly or by the hips. Roll the shoulders away from the ears and back down to the ground. Let's be here for one minute together to finish up our practice in this beautiful Shavasana. Feeling your breath, the journey of your breath through your body, the connection of your body to the ground beneath you, to the earth. Again, coming back to that movement of your breath. Noticing how when you inhale, you lift and rise and fill up and lengthen. And on the exhale, you ground and feel your bones become heavy. And everything contracts back to center on that exhale. A couple more breaths. free to stay here afterwards if you wish <laughs> if you have time and then slowly using your hands and your legs to help you come up to a comfortable seat any comfortable seat keep the eyes closed preserving that shavasana energy a little bit longer Feel the circulation flowing from head to legs. Find a beautiful tall posture, heart radiating forward, shoulders roll back. One more deep breath. And then hands to heart center. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you did, Please leave a comment down below, like the video, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye!